Um, let's get started with class. Um, this is love. Fun, 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 fun. All right, let's get started. Um, uh, share screen. Then my second screen. So just um, FYI, if you're interested in more of the device physics stuff, I will add this eight minute video to the playlist that basically goes over what I went over yesterday in a much more uh, eloquent way than I will ever be able to do it. Um, look, it even has the little dancing electrodes and holes. I mean, electrons and holes and whatever. Um, so yeah, so I'll post this in the YouTube thing. <laughs> While searching for this video, I, I, I learned something interesting, which is that, so I always post these videos and I say it's made for kids so that they don't put ads on them. And then I, I accidentally clicked on like comments that people have left. And then there's like five-year-olds saying, why is it recommending me? <laughs> so yeah, now I know I gotta keep it PG if I wanna keep doing this. <laughs> All right, so the yeah, so today we're gonna continue talking about MOSFETs. Uh, I hope all of you know how important MOSFETs are in our modern life. So at some point you woke up this morning, hopefully, and uh, you picked up your phone. You just interacted with billions of transistors. Um, so kind of all of computation, the backbone is on trans transistors. Then you went downstairs and potentially use your microwave, more transistors in there. Um, you wanna make some coffee, transistors in there. There's transistors everywhere, basically, in our uh, modern world. Uh, they're so ubiquitous that during the uh, pandemic, there was a car shortage. And it's mostly because uh oh okay. It's mostly because the plants that make transistors in Taiwan and China were closed down due to the pandemic. And uh, no transistors, no new cars. <laughs> it's that simple. And so, yeah, so transistors are very important. They might not be fun to learn, but they are fun to have. Um, yeah, so I hope that that kind of, kind of uh, underscores the importance of this. Actually, transistors are so important that in part, we were discussing with the department about removing all 2K1 transistor stuff, moving some of the 2K2 material into 2K1. Um, so that kind of like, we could spend more time here on transistors and then we would save some time in that. And the department was like, no, because we want all engineers to know something about transistors and 2K and uh, other engineering disciplines that don't have to take that class. And so don't have to take 2K2. And so if we remove it, they don't learn it. and so that, those are the challenges, I guess. Uh, so yeah, transistors, very important. There's no AI without transistors. Uh, there's no deep learning, no big data. Even big data, you know, like to get big data to begin with, you need sensors and kind of at the scale that we have sensors. So like this microphone has transistors. 
uh, we wouldn't have them consider. So even from the sensing stage, not just the computation stage. Uh, and in this class, actually, we don't even talk about the computation. We just talk about the amplification of signals. So yeah, I hope this kind of motivates you wanting to at least know a little bit about this stuff. Um, yeah, it's just... Okay, so going back to the transistors, last class, we started introducing these devices. We talked about the NMOS and PMOS, and we basically said that both NMOS and PMOS have the same salient behavior. It's just one has a current that goes from the drain to the source, and that would be the NMOS. And the other one has a current that goes from the source to the drain. Uh, so that was the main distinguishing feature. And additionally, because current flows in the on states uh, with different polarity, that means that uh, the inequalities to be in each regime were reversed. So if you look at both of these devices side by side, the distinguishing feature between all of the inequalities is that the less dense become more dense and uh, more dense become less dense and vice versa, whatever. Um, additionally, in order to maintain the equations simple, we typically assume ID is defined in the direction that is pointing in the circuit element. So this ID is positive whenever the current flows from drain to source for the NMOS, and it's positive for the PMOS when it flows from the source to the drain for the PMOS. So just remember that, uh, and that, that allows us to use exactly the same equation for both uh, NMOS and PMOS circuits when it comes to finding the IV relationship. Okay, so, sorry. so I, I guess that's a, another thing. It's important that you get um, familiar with these symbols. So the way that you're gonna distinguish a PMOS from an NMOS is by the direction of the arrow. Um, so basically the arrow always, if it points away from the gate, that's an NMOS. And if it points into the gate, <laughs> into the gate, that's a PMOS. Additionally, the way you distinguish between the source and the drain terminal is the source terminal is always where the arrow sits. So in a, in a typical circuit diagram, you will see something that looks like this. And then you're basically going to have to realize that this is the source, this is the drain, this is the gate, and this is uh, a PMOS because it's pointing away from the gate. Sorry, an NMOS because it's pointing away from the gate you won't actually see all these extra labels. Um, what else is there? Okay, and then we additionally said there is uh, two different types of each transistor. There's the depletion and enhancement mode. The main difference between depletion and enhancement is that depletion is normally on. And the way that's exhibited is through the V threshold being less than zero, nothing else changes, or not, sorry, not less than zero, less than zero for NMOS and greater than zero for PMOS. And uh, so that's basically all that changes. The math is the same. The inequalities are the same, uh, but everything remains the same. It's just that now your B threshold has a different sign than it would otherwise. So in part, you know, these, these, these symbols kind of have some logical, some logic to them, which is that the depletion mode is normally on. And uh, so it tends to carry current even if you don't turn it on. And so that's why it has this thicker drawing of the channel uh, because it basically normally will allow current to flow through without having to need some bias between the gate and the source. Whereas this one has a thinner kind of indicating that you actually need to uh, add some current, some bias between the gate and the source in order to actually make this thick enough so that current can flow up and down. So just remember thick means normally on, Thin means off. Um, think of this like a bridge. Uh, let's say you wanna, you have one of these walking bridges where like one person can walk through there, 
and an electron is a car. Like uh, if, the, if the bridge is too thin, there's no way the car is gonna be able to go through it. But if the bridge is thick, then the car can go through it. So this one has a thick bridge, car can go through it. This one has a thin bridge, no way, unless of course uh, you basically add an extra ramp that they can actually, so that now you can fit the full car with. So just remember these signs. Um, yeah. Okay, so from last lecture, I hope that what you really needed to know is what I just said, that there's these two types of transistors, the direction of current flow, and what these different symbols mean, and that's it. Today, we're gonna actually start looking into what these equations really imply about the about how the transistor behaves. <clears throat> so let's assume for now that I connect a voltage source to this uh, transistor here. And uh, one second. Okay, so I guess this is okay. Yeah, a transistor here. And uh, let's say I put through this thing zero volts. So what region would I be on it? So here it's telling me that V threshold equals one. So what region would this uh, transistor be in if V threshold is one? Yeah, yeah, it would be a cutoff because remember, <clears throat> cutoff means that VGS is less than V threshold. Um, and so as a result, this uh since V threshold is one, so I'm just gonna plug in one. And then here we said we plug in zero for VGS, so VGS. Then we're gonna basically be a cutoff, which means that our ID. I'm gonna connect now another source here between the drain and the source plus minus. If I plug in one volt here for VDS, so this is, what what would I expect the current to be? Yeah, zero. Yeah, and then if I put two volts, it's gonna be zero, three volts and so on and so on. And so on. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I, uh, when I put in one volt through VGS, what, what do you think was gonna happen? Well, what, what region am I operating under? Well, it, technically, yeah, I guess. So it's still cut off, but we can plug in. So what is VDS sat? What is VGS minus V threshold? Okay, so we're gonna have zero here, VDS um, minus. Yeah, I think I think there should be an equality here. Sorry. Okay, because this this equation is won't actually give you the correct result. So here you're basically going to get um, you're gonna get zero current going through uh, the transistor. Does that make sense? Okay, so now let's say I put two volts into this. Um, so now am I in cutoff anymore? No, so now I'm either in triode or saturation. So to figure out whether I'm on triode and saturation, I need to figure out what my VDS sat is, which in that VDS sat is defined as VGS minus V threshold. So in this case, it's two minus one, which equals one. So VDS sat is one and VDS sat here is one. Okay, so now let's say I plug in 0.25 volts to VDS, what region would I be in? Triode, yeah. Okay, so now I can just basically plug into my equation. Uh, so VDS sat is just one and then K is two. 
So two times one times 0. 0.5 times one half times two times, sorry, 0. 0.25, sorry, 0. 0.25 squared. And so at 0. 0.25, I'm gonna have two times one is just two and then times 0. 0.25, that gives me 0. 0.25 here times two minus, and then two times one half is just one times 0. 0.25 squared. Oh, it's not fun. Um, that's just uh, 0. 0.125. So I have 0. 0.5 minus 0. 0.125. And uh, wait, is it one two five? Yeah, one two five. Um, and then um, yeah, I don't know what point two five square is actually. That's not correct. I'm gonna have to do this in my calculator. See, I need to use transistors to do this to teach my class. You know. Okay, point zero. Six two five. Okay, so at this point, you could see that your current will actually at point two five here is going to be point four point four three just for rounding. So it's going to be somewhere down here point four three. So it's not so important that we get the correct. Okay, so now um, if I put five. 0.5 volts here, what region would I be? Yeah, so we're in try it again. So now I just basically, if I want to figure out the current, and we're in try out because here it's 0.5, and then 0.5 is indeed less than one, and 0.5 is definitely not greater than one. So at this point, I can actually figure out what ID is by simply plugging in 0.5 for the current. And then I plug in 0. 0.5 here. And uh, I'm just not kind of using my brain. Thank you. 0. 0.25. So then this becomes uh, 0. 0.25. And then here, 0. 0.5 times that becomes 1. So now I have 0. 0.75. So that's like right here. So that's 0. 0.75. I'm just going to draw it here. <coughs> Okay, so now at one volt, let's say now I plug in one volt to uh, this circuit here. What region am I now? Yeah, so this is one and one is indeed greater than or equal to one. So now we can use our saturation equation. And they told us to assume lambda is zero. So since lambda is zero, we can ignore this factor. Um, and so now what is the current? Yeah, so basically here I can plug in two over two because they gave us that Kn is two. And then uh, one squared is just one. So it's just one. And then what happens at, if I plug in two volts here? Yeah, so what's the current? Well, it's still one because remember VDS sat is just VGS minus V threshold and that didn't change. So it's still, so you still plug in one here. So you're still going to get one. And if I plug in for VDS three, then it's still one, four, one, and so on. Is it make, does it make sense to everyone that this is, why this is constant? So this is, uh, once you get to saturation, the current that comes out is no longer a function of VDS. Because remember, VDS sat is not VDS. It's this thing we defined, which is just VGS minus V threshold. OK, so just for the sake of uh, completion, let's try another voltage. So let's say now I decide to plug in two volts here. And so now if I have 0 volts VDS, how much is the current? Well, first, what region am I of operation am I in? Trial. Okay, so basically, it's this equation. 
and then it's going to be zero minus zero. So yeah, it's zero. So now let's say I, I decide to put in one volt. What region of operation am I in? Wait, let me do it here. Uh, God. Wait, I had two volts earlier, right? Yeah, sorry. Let's say I, I want to put four volts here. So what region of operation am I in if I put one volt here? Prior. Okay. So basically, if so first of all, if this is if VGS is four, then VDS sad becomes three. So remember, VDS sad is just a function of VGS and your uh transistor V threshold, which for this particular transistor is just one volt. Okay, so now we plug in here three. So all these ones now become three, three, three. And then this becomes three. Okay, and then K is just two. And then this is two over two, which cancels. Okay, so we're in this region. So two times three times one gives us six minus uh, one squared, which is just... Uh, one, so that gives us that the volt, the current will be five. Oh, this is not good. Okay, the current will be five. Uh, I shouldn't have used such a high voltage, but okay. Let's do, what happens if I put a VDS equals two? What region am I in now? Yeah, you're still at tryout because you're still less than VDS sat. And so as a result, you just plug in basically, for VDS here, you would plug in two. So you have two times three times two, which gives you 12 minus four, which gives you eight. So now you would have six, seven, eight. So at two amps, you're here at two volts. And then um, at three volts now, what, what, I'm, what region am I in? Yeah, yeah, your saturation. So now, VDS is great. It's greater than or equal to VDS sat. So now your current will just be two over two, which is just one times three squared. So that gives you nine. So nine would be the. Okay. So so far, this is how it's gonna look. And then um, if I keep increasing the current of VDS, what's gonna happen? Yep, it stays constant. Cool. So that's basically the how the the IV relationship of these devices. But we can see something here that's quite interesting that we can actually control the amount of current that flows through this branch through controlling the voltage at this branch. Uh, because you can see that for some region, it can behave as a constant. And we're going to be using that for amplification in the next few lectures. Okay, so we went over this. All right. Um, who wants me to go over one more of these examples, but now for PMOS? Or is this kind of a good race of hands? One more of these, no more of these? No, you get it? Okay, let's continue. Yeah, so the, the graph for NMOS, as you can see, looked like this. The graph for PMA, oh, wait, 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 no, sorry. I, I do have to do one more of these, I apologize. Yeah, because uh, now we're gonna look at what happens when you vary VGS, um, how uh, the saturation current varies. So for, for just for a little while, we're gonna assume here that I put 100 volts or like a really big amount of voltage through VDS just to kind of, for sake of argument. So if I start putting in current through a voltage through VGS, so let's say I have zero volts, what, how much current do I expect to come out of this circuit? Zero, okay. Now, if I uh, 
increase the voltage to one, how much current should I expect to come out of this thing? Yeah, it's still zero because remember it's one minus one. So that gives me that VDS sat. It's still zero. And so as a result, I expect zero voltage to come out. Okay, so now what happens at two? So remember, I have to plug in two here, minus one, which gives me one. And then uh, because this is 100 uh, and this is one, it's gonna be in saturation, which means that I have one squared, two over two. So now I have one. And then if I go to three, what's gonna happen? Am I in cutoff, triode or saturation? Yeah. So. I'm gonna be in saturation until I reach like 101 volts, basically, because this is 100 and VDS sat increases linearly with increasing VGS. But now this will become basically, if I put in two, then now it becomes four. And then if I plug in four, it becomes, uh, wait, three, so it becomes nine, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So this looks like a quadratic. So as I vary my VGS, the saturate, what we call the saturation current increases quadratically. So if I were to plot it on this graph, so let's, I'm just gonna here, uh, let's do this color. So VGS will be in this color. If I were to plot that same thing in that color, it would look something like this. Sorry, um, do something like this. And then um, the other plots would kind of go like that. For different values of VGS, I have one of these lines. So remember this line we got by choosing VGS equals two, and this line we got by choosing VGS equals four. And then this parabola, we chose it, we got it by finding the current at saturation for each value of VGS. Okay, so I have a, a question for all of you. Let's say now V threshold is, uh, this is a challenge question here. V threshold equals negative one. What would you expect to happen in this graph? Yeah. Start off. Would it start off as trial though? Just remember how much uh, VDS we have. Yeah, 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 exactly. So let's 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 just very briefly look at this. So basically I'm saying that V threshold is negative one. So we have VGS plus one is our VDS set. So if VGS is zero, how much current how much current would flow through this thing? Huh? Yeah, one amp. So basically this. And then if VGS is one, how much would flow? Well now VDS sat is two, which means four would flow. And so one, four. And then if VDS uh VGS is three two. Now VDS sat becomes three, so nine would flow. So we're up here. And then at negative one, it would shut off basically. What kind of transistor do you expect to have the blue curve? Yeah, depletion and MOS basically. Uh, so basically, when you have the that the threshold is negative, which is what it means to be depletion, what ends up happening is even if you plug in zero volts across VGS, you still get a non-zero saturation current, and that's why it's called a normally on uh, transistor. 
Okay, so for the PMOS, I'm just gonna draw the curves. I'm not gonna go through the whole uh, nonsense, but uh, so basically we stick a source here and then we choose a given fixed voltage. So if we choose for this particular case, V threshold would be negative one. Uh, and because, uh, so if we choose negative one as our voltage, then uh, V, so V threshold is so VGS minus one. So if we choose VGS equals to negative one, we're gonna have that V DS sat is zero. And in that case, we're gonna have that VDS sat is zero. And we will be at cutoff because VDS is not less, VGS is not less than V threshold. So now we have to go to two volts. At two volts, now VDS sat, negative two volts, VDS sat is actually equal to negative one. So now we have negative one here. And then the VDS has, if the VDS is negative, uh, if it's negative, so let's say it's negative one, that means that uh, it's basically the same. So we would be, so let's say it's negative one half, sorry, one half. Then that means we're in triode region. So we have to plug it into this equation. So we have two times negative 0.5 times negative one minus one half two times 0 0.5 squared. So 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.5, two, so that's just one, one that becomes 0.75. So we have 0.75 with one half. And then um, the, If we increase the voltage further, we're going to basically eventually be in saturation and we're going to get a curve that looks like this. So this is VGS equals one. Then um, if I choose VGS equals two, VGS equals two, wait, sorry, VGS, oh, I that. Oh. negative two. If I choose VGS equals to negative three, then VDS sat will be two, so then you're at four, and then you reach saturation at negative two volts, and then it's gonna look something like this. And then, so this is VGS equals negative three. Uh, and then if I do four, then it's going to go to nine. Sorry. It's going to look something like this. And this would be VGS equals negative four. And this would be nine amp milliamps. Um, so this is how it would look for a PMOS. So it's exactly the same, but reverse. One thing to note is that typically what's going to happen is that when you see a PMOS on a graph, you are not going to see this. What you will see is either the same exact plot, except the plot VSD, implying that VDS is negative. Or sometimes you'll just see the number line with the numbers backwards. Um, so just uh, so you're all, no one ever plots this thing like in the mirror sense. Everyone just plots makes this plot for both PMOS and NMOS, and then you know whether it's NMOS or PMOS via how the x-axis is labeled. So just remember that. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna, so basically then this plot would look something like uh, this. Um, but let's say I'm on depletion mode. So let's say that, that 
I make this into a depletion mode. What does that mean for B threshold? Yeah, it changes signs. So for the PMOS, since all the polarities are reversed, that means that B threshold would be positive, whereas for the NMOS, it meant that B threshold would be negative. And what does it mean for the uh, quadratic line that I drew? Yeah, so it just ships so that now at zero, it's normally on. That's basically it. Uh, okay, we will, actually, I want you to do this before we do that. Okay, now let's do a little quiz here. So let's say you see these plots. Can you identify what are the regions of operation? So here, what would you call this? Yeah, exactly. So all of these are saturation. And then uh, what do you call it when you are here? Yeah, all of this is cut off. And then the triode region is just this one. So when it behaves approximately like a resistor, we call that the triode region. When it behaves like nothing, then that's cut off. And then when it behaves like something that we can't change, that's saturation. Okay, so now, now let's 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 ask the more interesting question, which is what kind of transistors are these? Um, so can anyone tell me what the top left transistor is? Yeah, how do you know that though? Yeah, so, so okay, so it's NMOS because it's saturation as BDS increases. So remember, BDS is more positive, means things increase. Uh, now what tells you that it's, uh, the, so what's the other end must, I guess, before we, we go further into this. So which plot would be the other end moss? Yeah. Bottom left. Yeah. The BL. Yeah. The good old BL. Um, but okay. So now, how did you know that it was depletion mode? I hope all of you know that this is basically an exam question. It's just that, so if you can do this, you're, go ahead. Oh. And, and you're thinking of going to this uh, eclipse thing. <laughs> you know, it's just going to make things worse, right? <laughs> okay, so either good handwriting, small, or bad handwriting, big. Choose your poison. Um, <laughs> what? Can I ask you your original question now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in depletion. It's in like the other type of the model. Wait, so which one's in depletion and which one's enhancement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You didn't answer my previous question, but okay, yeah. The bottom one is in depletion. Exactly. When VGS is zero, so that's the yellow line. Um, and, uh, yeah, so when BGS is zero, the yellow line, which I'm circling here, the current is non-zero, meaning that it's in depletion mode because you don't need a BGS to get non-zero current. Whereas for this one, when BGS is zero, you get no current. And actually you can't even see the red line because, uh, you also don't get any current at negative two VGS. So it's like under that yellow line. Okay, so now what are these two by process of elimination? 
yeah, exactly. PMOS, because as you decrease VDS, you get more and more current. And as you decrease VDS, uh, you get more and more uh, current. And then the, so this is, we said depletion. This is uh, enhancement. And then this is, uh, both of these are NMOS. And then this, both of these are PMOS. And uh, which one's the depletion and which one's the enhancement? Yeah, top one's depletion again, because you have non-zero current whenever VGS is zero, and that means that it's normally on. So depletion normally on. Yeah. So this one's like my nephews. <laughs> They're normally. <laughs> So depletion is like a, like <laughs> young children <laughs> normally on basically. Okay, so if you can understand all of these curves, you basically understood today's lecture. Um, so what we eventually want to do is think start thinking of this circuit as a, a uh, voltage controlled current source. So we can think of this as we change VGS, if we, as long as we stay in saturation, we can control the amount of current going through uh, the circuit. It's gonna increase quadratically. So we can kind of start thinking of this as long as, of course, VDS is large enough uh, as a voltage controlled current source. And that's why it has kind of a, that's one of the nice characteristics of MOSFETs. And we're gonna talk about this more next lecture. Next lecture, so today, uh, today we went over kind of an important thing, which is if I showed you an IV relation, you should be able to identify what kind of MOSFET it is. And that could be VDS over ID. That could be VGS ID. And remember those had the, looked like that. Um, yeah, just as a, what, what would this one be? And then this is uh, three, this is zero. Yeah, that would be an NMOS. And then if the thing is here, then that would be a depletion mode. So this is depletion. This is enhancement. So if you can identify those four curves, you, you pretty much know everything we needed to know from this particular lecture. That's it. Um, next class, we're going to study this circuit, which is the base circuit of every MOS circuit that we're gonna study in this whole class. And so I wonder how important it is that you know how to do this for an exam. Uh, and then we're also going to study this current mirror, which is actually an important circuit because it's actually the first real circuit implementation that you will see of this. So, so far when you solve circuits, you just think of this like current source, but you don't know how to build it. You have to go to your lab and like basically buy this huge machine that you just like crank up and it gives you a fixed amount of current. And that's what you think of a current source. Well, if you actually wanna build a system like that you're gonna sell to people, you can't just be like, here's this $500 current source and you hook it up to it and then you actually have to build your own current sources. And so this is the, the other circuit that we're gonna study next class. For the exam, you will have to understand both of these circuits and that's kind of the last thing we'll have to understand. Um, are there any questions? Thank you.